Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, it's going to be another fun landscape painting today. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now in my traceable, I did go over it with a black Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are going to pause the video and draw what you see. If you're utilizing the traceable, you do not have to go over it with the black lines. Now on this one, we're actually going to go kind of crazy pop art colors. I have used this traceable um, in another painting that looks a little more realistic, and this one's going to be kind of the sister uh, video to that one. So if you want to get kind of funky and just utilize the traceable, this one's a good one to follow. So like I said, this one's going to be nice and pop art. We are using that yellow, and we're putting a really bold, kind of cartoonish sun in the background. And I did used to live in Arizona, so I was thinking of the Arizona flag when I um, made this one. We're going to kind of do our rays in this yellow, and then we'll fill in the in-between areas with red. You are more than welcome to switch out any colors on today's painting or do something entirely different. And you can also, like I said, use this as a guide if you want to switch out some of the other traceables or uh, paintings that I have on my channel. Uh, get creative. So today we are using our primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and we've also got black and white on the plate. And I am applying that paint pretty thick, uh, just because I am using student grade paint and I want good coverage. So adjust for what you need to uh, with the paint that you have in front of you. So we are going to take our uh, progress photo, we're going to let that dry, we're going to move into blue, um, and we're going to start moving into our ocean. And I am using that direct blue and going right below that horizon line. Um, and then I will add a little bit of white to this later and go for a little bit lighter blue. Again, as you're kind of going crazy colors, trust your instincts. Don't feel like you have to plan the whole thing out from the beginning. Just start with one color, put it in a few areas, and then start with another color. And then before you know it, you'll have your whole painting uh, filled in and maybe even better than what you could have planned or what you anticipated. So this is just kind of a good space to be in for creativity. So you can see that we went with a medium blue, added a little bit of white to it. I am kind of leaving the bit of the area where the white caps of the waves are. It's almost like an elongated triangle. Uh, we left that and we're going to go even lighter blue on that area, almost that pure white. Again, feel free if you want purple or teal or other colors in there, uh, make it what you want. All right, doing a great job, off to a good start. So take your progress photo. I do recommend letting everything dry. Uh, make sure that your yellow is dry before you move into your red. Uh, you will notice that if your yellow is still wet and the red crosses it, you will make orange. Um, and having it dry just kind of helps keep some of those crisper lines. Now, I am using that middle flat brush, a little more control, and same thing. You can see some of the places where it's a bit thinner on my application. And to go a little bit thicker on that application, I do kind of hold that brush at like a 45 degree angle and apply that paint on there pretty thick. If you are finding frustration with that and not getting the coverage that you want, even if you are applying it thick, apply one layer, let it dry, and then apply a second layer on top of it. And some of my other videos, I do put two layers on there, um, but that'll give you a bit more of an opaque coverage. Also, if you happen to be on a stretched canvas, remember to carry this color around the edges of the canvas. That way it just looks nice when you hang it on the wall, having the color wrap around the sides of a stretched canvas. All right, another place to pause the video. You guys are doing great. We are going to make our own shade of green, and that is going to be yellow and blue. Uh, more yellow goes a little bit lighter, more blue goes a little bit darker. So feel free to uh, make the shade of green that you want. And if you need to, like I did here, I just switched down to the small pointy brush. Um, feel free to go back and forth with any of the brushes today that might make it easier. Feel free to rotate the canvas, turn it upside down, turn it sideways, whatever you need to do to make your creative process a little bit more fun and enjoyable. And if you have gotten this far and you have not taken a deep breath, please inhale, relax, 
a lot of my first time painters hold their breath in anticipation that that is going to help the process when actually it just makes you more exhausted. So remember to breathe. You're going to do a great job. Just the fact that you are here going through the steps already makes you successful. So here we're going for a lighter green and that was adding more yellow to the mixture we were just using. Again, adjust to what you need. And my red paint, some of it is still kind of wet so you can see a few places where it overlapped. Um, you, if that happens to you, just wipe it off with a paper towel or apply your uh, desired color a little bit thicker. All right, doing good. So now we actually, um, we're gonna be moving into green. And again, we've got that base on there and we're just gonna kind of slap that into that base. This is called wet on wet blending. And again, you'll notice as you move your brush, uh, that darker color does start to diffuse in there. So again, just kind of play with what you want for this little grassy shape. Do remember to get out of your chair and look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. This is the normal viewing distance for artwork and most things in life. And if you feel like adjusting something by looking at it from that distance, by all means, trust that and go ahead and make the adjustment. All right, so now we're gonna make our sand color with our primary colors. And we're gonna grab white, tiny amount of yellow, and then a tiny amount of red, a super, super tiny amount of red. A little bit goes a long way. And if you do what I just did and you put some on your plate and then you realize, ah, oh, it's actually a little too bright, just grab some of that direct white like I did, and then you can use that base that you originally put on your uh, canvas and you can mix it into the white. And this is what we call uh, basically mixing your color directly on the canvas. So just kind of play with it. And then if you need a little bit darker shade, you can kind of slap that on top of there. Again, just kind of have fun with this um, process for the sand. It does not have to be perfect. And depending on the light from the sky, the sand does pick up different colors around it. So again, does not have to be perfect. All right, we did let this dry and took our progress photo. Now we're doing the white caps of the waves. And I'm using that uh, large brush or that medium flat brush, holding the brush perpendicular. And with white paint, we're basically just kind of tapping um, the, uh, the tips of the brush onto the canvas. And that's kind of creating that nice little foamy, the white caps as they're rolling over. And we will do that on the beach line where the blue and the sand color meet. If you find the big brush too much, move down to that middle flat brush and you'll have a little bit more control. All right, you're doing great. And you do not have to go as fast as the video. It is a time-lapsed video. So take the video at your pace and pause as needed. From here on out, we will be using black paint. We're gonna put our um, palm trees on there and then we're actually gonna outline a few areas. You do not have to outline everything. You can outline in a different color. Um, you can do your palm trees in regular colors, your call for um, what you wanna to do to make this kind of pop art. And the outline does kind of make it pop artish and it kind of cleans up some of your edges. So. Again, for a lot of my first time and beginner painters, this is a nice approach to get you comfortable with the brushes, comfortable with your pressure, um, while you're getting comfortable with everything else with the painting process. So as you're working on these lines, remember to breathe, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, and that will give you a little bit more steadiness. And you also wanna play with the pressure of the brush. Try to keep a consistent pressure. But if this is your first time doing this um, and you've got varying widths of lines, that's okay. Just embrace for embrace yourself for where you're at today. But as you're playing with the pressure of the brush, you'll notice light pressure creates a bit of a skinnier line and more pressure creates a bit of a wider line. This does get easier and more comfortable with more and more practice. What you were learning in today's painting, your muscles are gonna remember that, your brain's gonna remember that, and when you go to paint the next time, hopefully tomorrow or next week or next month, um, please don't wait a year, please try to paint sooner rather than later. But the next time that you go to paint, your brain's gonna remember this, your muscles are gonna remember this, and it'll be like, oh yeah, I remember how to do this. And again, you're just building that muscle memory and your comfort level. Now, as we get into the palm trees, we're gonna put the palm fronds on first. And I kind of have those first two branches kind of hug towards that tree. And then we're gonna put um, 
leaves on each of these palm fronds. And when you get into the leaves, they're going to be little dash marks. I want you to think of each dash mark as a leaf on the tree. And I want your palm tree to be healthy and close to a nice water source. So I want you overlapping those leaves, really abundant. Um, every two or three brush strokes, go back and grab more paint. Um, and then again, just look at your painting from a distance. See if you need a few more leaves in one area compared to another. Go back and adjust. And also keep in mind that there are tons and tons of different species of palm trees. Some of them dance in the wind. Some of them might be a little more rigid. Some of them might have a little sway to them. Whatever your palm tree looks like, embrace that. That is where you are at. That is where your palm tree is at for today. Again, remember to breathe. You guys are doing great. All right, we're going to put a few little highlights in here of white. Again, completely optional, but I want you to just observe the general place that I put that and um, mimic that on your canvas. Again, you do not have to put all of them. Uh, you can put more than I put. Do trust your instincts if you're inclined to do something that I do not do on the video. And like I said earlier, please don't wait too long to do your next painting. This is a great creative outlet to a lot of our stressful lives. And just the process of painting is really therapeutic. Even if you paint something that you throw away, the process is really important in this crazy stressful world. All right, thanks so much, you guys. Great job. Again, add whatever you need to. If you need to go back and add some of those white caps on the waves, um, if you want to put them over that uh, line that's separating the water and the sand, go right ahead. Um, but thank you so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me and get creative. And uh, until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can. And any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.